Okay. So, hi. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, my name is uh, Megan Ranson. And I'm trying to make this video right now for uh, YouTube, which I, hopefully that will be obvious if it, when it makes it to YouTube. But I haven't ever done a video for YouTube before. And it's strange because I was making videos uh, on Facebook. And uh, then that, relationship ended and um, so I need another forum and uh, YouTube is the place to go but the thing about that is that uh, where I'm at and what I want to discuss it it feels like <laughs> It feels like going in hard and um, out of the blue, really out of the blue with the kind of uh, thing I want to discuss. But I guess sometimes things just are out of the blue. Um, so just know that if anyone even sees this, <laughs> that I, I have been discussing things like this and working my way through um, talking about things like this and it's it's just a weird introduction I guess but what I really want to talk about is uh, I want to talk about I want to talk about shadow I want to talk about disassociation and I want to talk about self mutilation and it, that's a heavy spoonful of things but I can't separate them from each other and um, it is a web it is an absolute interconnected um, conversation for me uh, so I have to try to find my way through it and how do I say this I don't know how this is gonna go because part of me a lot of me really doesn't want to know what I'm gonna say I want to let myself just say what comes out in the moment and I also just don't have the mentality right now to like you know work up a agenda I'm not in an agenda place so uh, I just have to freestyle it through uh, a labyrinth of um, things that I can't I can't separate from each other which is uh, our shadow material the unconscious um, and disassociation uh, and self-mutilation. Now, there's many other places that all of this spills out into, and I'm sure it will, because it's me, and I'll spill out. Um, but uh, the reason that I really want to discuss this now is because, well, first and foremost, I have a uh, tremendous personal experience with struggling with all of these things uh, disassociation it's been a big thing in my life um, self-mutilation has been also and shadow is a big thing in all of our lives whether or not we wish to talk about it or know about it um, and all of those things these this trinity of things um, have bestowed upon me Um, a gorgeous path into myself and more deeply and fully into life and I have an enormous amount of respect for all of them um, and you know secondly I want to discuss things like this uh, because they're so taboo most of the time and I found that to be like a huge amount of the pressure uh, that essentially creates the the it creates the condition of uh, 
an angry, uh, really um, destructive shadow and the need for dissociation and the, the, um, the reaction of self-mutilation. So it's not taboo to me at all. Like, actually, I think it's amazing and fascinating, and uh, I think that it's time to talk about it like that, because it is, it's amazing, and it's fascinating, all of this, and it's a reflection of the depth of human nature. Oh, I can't, I can't do it. I'm like stuttering. <laughs> it is, it's a reflection of the depth of human nature and the extraordinary capacity that we have to feel uh, to respond um, and to and and to need uh, need life uh, need to accept life need to be in life need to find a way back into life because we we really are so collectively really disassociated from real life at this point um, and and I I really do I think it's it's ridiculous these aren't uncommon things actually it's just strange we put them in the closet and it's very isolating for the people going through them which is all of us usually in some capacity i know self mutilation it seems to be pushing it but really uh, um it isn't and another reason i want to talk about all of these things and and something really important about um self mutilation is that and where it ties into shadow for me in a place that I can't take them apart is there is, um, I don't want to say there's a light side and a dark side of life anymore because it sounds, it just implicates the dark. Like it's the devil, like it's the bad place you can't go. And I don't feel that way about it. I would say there's an unconscious part of ourselves and life and there's a conscious part. And, um, the unconscious, that darkness, that the idea of darkness, it's, 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 it's unconscious. You can't see there. You can't, um, you can't see, you have to feel and search and, uh, receive. And you do have to go through the things that you don't want to see. That's part of the situation. And most people don't really want to do that. I mean, who does? We don't, we're not supposed to want to do that until we're ready to do that. Like I didn't, I mean, who wants to go into things that are very hard to face? Like that's completely normal though, to feel that way. Um, but that doesn't mean you don't have to do it anyway, because you do. And then the thing about it is if you do that, you get into all of the unseen things that, uh, you need to see about yourself and about the possibility of your life, of the possibility presented by life itself. Um, you get to the gemstones. Um, you get to the things that you needed in the first place to see so that you can carry it back into the light and, or the, the conscious and, and, and live in that uh, fullness of yourself and appreciation of this world and who we each are. And so, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a voyage. It really is. And the thing is, is that this, okay, hold on. I'm sorry, but it ties so much into self mutilation for me because self mutilation needs to be also understood from uh, a standpoint of a conscious side and an unconscious side of, of this doing this. There are cultures all around the world that it, that alter their bodies, you know, neck things, you know, the rings that elongate necks and the uh, earrings that stretch the earlobes, tattoos. Um, this is, there's pain involved in all of this. You know, this isn't, you don't like sit there and like, you know, roll in ecstasy. I mean, well, some of us, if you're a dentist, <laughs> sorry. Oh my God. <laughs> but no. Okay. So wait. Okay. No, like most of it's a, it's a ritual. You know, you have to suffer, uh, some of the experience to, um, evolve through it and to bear the mark, you know? Um, but we are constantly 
all over this planet in, in different cultures and things working with our bodies. I've got to stop this soon and I haven't got it anywhere yet. I'm a God damn it. I'm such a mess. Um, I, but we're always working with our bodies. We're trying to figure out our bodies and how to be here. And there's, there's a conscious way to do it. There's unconscious ways to do it. And, um, I, I got to stop this. I feel like it's going on so much long. I'm like the biggest babbler ever, but I really do want to begin a conversation about what it's like to be dealing with uh, being a human being in your flesh and the struggle with that and all the ways it manifests. But the light and the lesser known aspects of uh, self-mutilation that's very common and the disassociation, which is uh, leaving the body, not knowing how to be in the body for reasons that are important a lot of the time. Um, uh, and then very detrimental. Um, just how that corresponds so much to um, what it's like to have to pierce your flesh to figure out how to be alive uh, or tear your skin apart or whatever it is. Um, and it's not all bad at all. It's, it's a beautiful it can be a beautiful beginning of a relationship with your own humanity. So, and then if it's ritual, maybe it's, it's more than that at that point, but we'll talk about it more, I guess. I'm be warming up. I haven't done this in a while about how to make these things more conscious so that they're, they're not like, they don't have to be hard to talk about or hear about or exist in. Okay, I'm really embarrassed, but that's normal for me and that doesn't stop me, so <laughs> right on.